This video is for anyone who is interested in going on cruise holidays. Hello, my name is Victoria and today I'm going to talk about my experience of travelling on the P&O Iona where me and my sister went on a seven day cruise along the Norwegian fjords. This cruise was departing from Southampton, so we had to travel from London to Southampton. Now there are two different options, you can get the coach from London Victoria or you can get the train. Now, I had booked train tickets, but on the actual date that we were traveling, we found out that there was a train strike. So I had to then order uh, coach tickets to get us there. The journey on the coach was fine. It was about, I think, under two hours to get there and it was very comfortable. Um, the coach station is actually just next door to the train station, so it was quite easy to get from there to the port. You can walk from the uh, train station and coach station to the port. It takes about 20 minutes to walk, but you can also get an Uber or cabs. There are taxis waiting outside. The P&O Iona landed in 2020, and so it is relatively new. It can take up to 5,200 guests and it has a capacity for 1,800 crew member. This ship is massive. It has 16 decks and in the atrium it's made so it's quite open with lots of big windows so it feels quite airy. Some people have said that it looks a bit like an um, airport um, waiting area and yeah, I can see that with the big glass and the um, high ceiling. So some people will like that. Some people won't. It was OK. It didn't take too long to board the ship. It looked like a really long queue as we were walking towards it. But it took about an hour for them to process our papers. We had to show our vaccination papers and our travel insurance. Luckily, we were traveling when the COVID restrictions had been relaxed. So it wasn't so scary. As soon as we boarded the ship, we had to go straight to our muster station. Now, this is where we have to go if there is any emergency. So once we went to our muster station and registered, we were free to roam the ship as we pleased. We were traveling on a budget, so we decided to pay for an inside cabin. The inside cabins were about £100 cheaper than the balcony cabins. When we got there, it was on deck nine and the room was quite compact, but it had everything that we needed. The beds were comfortable. It had a really good shower. There was a fridge, a big TV and the most important thing for a British cruise, it had tea making facilities. I love my cup of tea in the morning, so I was very happy to see the kettle. <laughs> Our seven day cruise had two uh, days at sea and we stopped at four different locations. I think we were quite fortunate when we traveled because we were able to get off the ship to go to our locations. I heard that some uh, cruises were unable to dock because of bad weather. We stopped at Stavanger. We stopped in Olden. We stopped at Hellesild. <laughs> and we stopped at Haugesund. I am sure that I butchered all of those names. <laughs> I apologise. Now, some people might look at me and think that I am not the typical type of person to be going on a cruise. And going on the P&O Iona, that was definitely the case. The the average age of the people on this cruise, I'd say were about 60 to 70 years old, but there were some younger people and there were some families with babies. So it was a mixture. It was, um, there were a lot more older people, but it was still a good cruise. We still had a good time. So there was a lot of smiling, a lot of chit chat. I mean, not from me because I'm an introvert, but I left that to my sister and she had a really great time getting to know the people. For this cruise, we paid about £600 per person and that included all gratuities. So we didn't have to worry about tipping the staff because that was already included in the price. This also included all meals, so we didn't have to worry about meals. There are some restaurants that you have to pay extra for, but it's not necessary for you to do that. There is plenty of food in the free restaurants that you've already paid for. There is also a drinks package that you can get, but these tend to be quite expensive unless you know that you're a really big drinker. Um, I don't tend to drink that much and my sister doesn't drink at all. So it wouldn't have been worth it to get the drinks package because 
both people in a cabin have to get the drinks package. So in the end, I just paid for my drinks as I went along and that was fine because then I just get the bill at the end of our cruise. The food on the ship was on the whole really good. There's plenty of options and the portion sizes are, I'd say, quite adequate. If you're worried about portion sizes, you can do what we sometimes did and we ordered two different mains or we'd order two different starters. So our table would be overflowing with food. You can uh, choose to eat in the restaurants or you can just go and eat in the buffet. The staff are all very friendly and very helpful, but you can notice that there is a big difference if you've been on cruises before. They have really reduced the amount of people that they're hiring. So sometimes at mealtimes, we found that our meals took a long time to get to us because they were just simply short staffed. So that's one of the things that you have to be patient with. The entertainment on this ship was so, so. Sometimes there were some good acts and other times they were a bit questionable. I'd have to say there were a lot of um, groups, lots of singing groups, and some of them were really good, but it felt like they were not the type of groups that catered to the age group of the people on the ship. So you had a lot of, I don't know, trance and dance music and a lot of people in their 60s you could see them getting up and leaving because, of course, they just couldn't relate to that music. So it was a quite a strange mix of uh, entertainment. Yeah. As well as live entertainment, there was a cinema and they did show films throughout the whole time that we were on the cruise. On the days at sea, the cinema was quite busy. Although on one time we went and saw uh, Batman and in the beginning we started with eight people and one by one people left because it wasn't a very good film. It was quite down, depressing and dark, but there was nothing else to do on the ship on that day. So we stayed and watched to the end. Would I recommend Batman? I don't think so. I'm so sorry. <laughs> there was a nightclub on the ship and we found ourselves there most evenings. The DJ did sometimes play some really good music. So quite a few people did get up on the dance floor. Um, there was one guy who uh, dragged my sister up on the dance floor and she seemed to have a really good time. I definitely wasn't going to be dragged up on the dance floor, but she did look like she was having fun. So I had to capture it. The highlights of traveling on the Piano Iona is that like any cruise it's always fun to get away it's lovely to uh, be somewhere where someone else is cooking for you someone else is tidying up after you and someone else is making your bed the benefits of going on a cruise is that you can also visit places that you might not want to visit uh, on your own so it was really nice that we got to go to four different locations I would say that the P&O cruise was value for money and I would definitely recommend it for anyone who's never been on a cruise. I'd say that this is a really good starter cruise because there isn't uh, too much um, pressure to join in with anything. It's great. It's relaxing. And yeah, why not? I would love to hear from you if you've been on the Piano Iona cruise, especially if you've traveled along the Norwegian fjords. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Okay, here we go. Another video. We are ready. Got my cup of tea. Let's go. This video is in. There was a nightclub. There was a nightclub.